Hello, readers. I am so happy to be here today with Lisa Phillips. So welcome, friend. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for having me. Okay, so for those who are not familiar with you, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm here to talk about this book. Um, <laughs> um, I guess it kind of surprised some people. The other day, there was a thread in the um, Avid Readers about um, European authors. So if you don't know, I'm actually British. So I was born and raised. All my family's there. Um, I still am a British citizen. But my husband, um, who I met at Bible College in California, he is American. American, and so we live here in Idaho and our kids are American. Well, they could be both, but they're American right now. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I'm British and I write a lot of books. I love how like you are totally doing the American like Idaho. Yeah. It's not like yeah. you're on the beach or in Florida, <laughs> like you're, you're yeah. full American in Idaho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love so much. Okay. And you have kids and family mm -hmm. and you balance all the things, which we'll talk about in a minute. But first, before we get there, we have to talk about this book, which is so amazing. So you got it there too. Yes, Cold Dead Night. And before, I want you to ta tell us about the book, but I need to read the first line. Mm -hmm. because I'm like, I had, I had it on my Kindle first before I got this copy. And I like open it up and I'm like ready to fall asleep. And I'm like, oh, I'll just read it. <laughs> and this is the first line, people. This is like crazy. Okay. If Kenna didn't run fast enough, a child would die tonight. <laughs> and so I was like thinking I'm going to just go to sleep. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. It didn't happen. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? No, it's legit. A child's going to die if she doesn't run as fast as you can. And then it just, so right from the beginning, fast paced, things are happening. You realize like this is one serious person and she's going to get business done. But very quickly, you realize like there's issues, there's past stuff going on, there's relationship stuff going on. And I don't want to give too much away because I want you to talk about it. So tell us about mm -hmm. the premise behind it and um, how you got the idea for the story. It was, um, you know, people ask me where I got the idea from and I can't remember. <laughs> because like it this okay, I, I write a lot of books where I write it and then pretty within a few weeks it's published. And this one was NanoRimo 2019. Oh wow. So, <laughs> so it's been a couple of years of revising and trying to figure out where I was gonna publish it and how I was gonna publish it and trying to kind of figure out how it fit. And I think it went through a whole period of like it didn't really know what it was. So it was yeah, one, of those books, one of those books you write, but it doesn't really know what it is yet. And so it did go through a lot of revisions. And so it's kind of a little bit of a diversion because I usually write um, romantic suspense with like 50% his point of view, 50% her point of view. This is completely Kenna's point of view. And while there are kind of some hints at a romance, it's um, going to be a series. And so the romance is going to develop across the whole series. Um, and so I, in the process of all the revisions and refining that I did on it, I took it to a conference where you get personal feedback. Mm -hmm. And so the um, guy who read the first couple chapters, um, first of all, he said Kenna was a brick wall. <laughs> so I, you can tell now that you've read it that I fixed that problem. Yeah. Um, so she she's a more nuanced human being now yeah. um, and not just a brick wall. I like, no, she, she doesn't want to talk reason. about it. There's right. a reason why she has a wall, though, up at yeah. the beginning. Yeah, I just want to talk about her feelings, not your business. Yeah, yeah so, exactly. Unfortunately, as authors, we have to kind of figure out how to portray that in a way that we're, we're like, okay, I know how she's feeling. So, um, and then he told me, one of the pieces of feedback that he gave me was she could carry a whole series um just her as a character and so it really spawned the idea of a long-running series so it's a lot more like slow burn she's got a lot of healing to do before she can even comprehend having a relationship um and so and i love crime stories and i love the blacklist and i love blue bloods and so just putting some of those like private investigator serial killer um putting those elements into stories that are the books that i want to read so we're totally into watching the mentalist right now mm -hmm. um, so 
it's all about the murderer and who did it. But then there's this overarching serial killer and yeah. all, all the things. So the, it has so many, like I could totally see this like being on TV where mm -hmm. you she's there's all this like action. But then there's these emotional, relational elements. And one thing I was going to tell you that I love is suddenly like we're moving along and you're like, what's going on? You can tell stuff is going on with relationships. And then you flip back mm -hmm. and you like, Know us like where this came from? Like oh, she just did that. Like really, she. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like my writer brains. Like ooh, I like how she yeah. did this. All of a sudden, so uh, okay. First, tell us a little bit about who she is, because mm -hmm. um, we're talking like everyone knows who she is. Everyone so, knows who Kenna is, obviously. Who she is and what she does, yeah. um, right at the beginning of the book. Okay, so her name is Kenna Bambury. She's actually McKenna, but she goes by Kenna. Um, and she was raised by a guy who um, was a consultant uh, murder investigator at, you know, police departments, federal agencies, Interpol. And so her dad was this like big hotshot um, freelance investigator. And he turned all of his cases into like books and movies. And he like embellished a bunch of stuff. And like, so everything everybody thinks about her father isn't really true. And so mm -hmm. I'm gonna explore a lot more of that in the series. But um, yeah. so she comes from this like raised, there's uh, one point where she's talking about eating cereal and watching Saturday morning cartoons with autopsy photos on the coffee table. <laughs> and I was like, of course. Not a normal childhood. And, so, oh, and, and so they lived in this like, um, like an Airstream. And so they would travel around. So she kind of had this like nomadic childhood. Um, and then she, he passed away um, when she was in college and she joined the FBI. Um, and then as an FBI agent, um, she got came, happened. Hmm? something happened. Something yeah. bad happened. Yeah. So she <laughs> has this terrible backstory um, that is still very fresh. And, you know, it wasn't just like, oh, you know, she got caught by the bad guy and it was a terrible it there was like so much more nuance to what mm -hmm. happened in the aftermath and who this person is and how that relates to it and just everything that was done to her you know by people she worked with and so now when the book begins she's a private investigator and she um basically travels around finding people that nobody else can find, working cases nobody else can solve, um, and just being a voice for people that nobody else can find. So, yeah. yeah. And I love that. And like I said, it's like right from the beginning, she's finding somebody, mm -hmm. which I'm not giving anything away because it's right in the first couple of pages. But then I love, like, you're exploring, like, immediately it's the action, but then you're like, well, what's going on? And you're like, oh, mm -hmm. let me show you what's going on. And it's not like... Mm -hmm telling like backstory like she's not sitting across the table telling what's going on you mm -hmm. flashback and there's these, these points what's going on so but the, even those are action scenes so it's not like it ever like oh this is getting boring because we're hearing about her backstory it's like oh and then this happened and then this it was, happened. It was so, like just enough that it was necessary and then yeah. i was also very aware of everybody doesn't want to read all the content that can sometimes come with mm -hmm. a serial killer book mm -hmm. and so i was very careful to um, you know, draw a boundary line of like, mm -hmm. you, you can imagine for yourself yeah. what happens, but it's effectively like a closed door murder um, to where, you know, you, your people are smart enough to figure out what's happening. I don't need to tell you. And that sometimes actually makes it scarier because your imagination <laughs> can come up with a bunch of stuff. So, yeah. So I just, I was very careful to not be gross with it, um, but to still, you know, it's a serial killer. Sweet. Yeah. And I think that's the interesting part too. Like you said, like, I'm not going to like be afraid to hand this to a 16 year old. Cause it's not going to be like mm -hmm. so graphic that it's going to yeah. be whatever, but it is interesting. And there is like my 19 year old loves like true crime podcasts mm -hmm. and all those things. So she yeah. doesn't know I have this yet. She's cause I wanted to finish it before mm -hmm. I told her, but she's going to like gobble it up. Aww. So it's that type of book like the, it's fast. It's fast paced. It's interesting. There's a lot going on. There's the murder mysteries. There's all the stuff, but it's not like you said. You kind of protected the reader so yeah. they don't have to read yeah. too much junk, which I, I think that is mm -hmm. awesome. Cool. All right, so let's talk about. You talk about a multiple book series. Mm -hmm. Um, do you know how many books? Or are you just gonna like keep going? Like, you know, the plan is to do twenty. 
Yeah. Which I don't wow. know. I mean, there's some um, FBI series in the market that are like 36 and they're still going. And, you know, there's yeah. always a point where you're like, okay, you're done now. And then you're still going. And then, so, I mean, if it, it's been 15 and I, and everybody's like, okay, and we're kind of, you know, then I'll shorten it. That's the advantage of being indie is I can go, I'm just going to leave it here. Or 20, yeah. we're like, the story isn't even halfway done yet. And I'm still going. So we'll kind of, yeah. so the plan is for 20, just because what I want to do is make the romance satisfying. And so I'm plotting that romance to develop across the series the way that it normally would with one book. And so I'm trying yeah. to hit those same beats so that the storyline is just really satisfying. So, yeah. Oh, good. And, and you think about it, what she does is like finding people that no one else. I mean, that each book is just these different stories, almost like a TV show. These yeah. different stories, yeah. and we're going to find this person and what's going on with this person. While at the same time, her personal story, the mm -hmm. romance is going to be I that. I get to go, ooh, thing. there's a romance yeah. and there is a mystery and there's a, you know, some, some, something else is happening over, you know, several books. And so what we did was, um, because I knew that this was a book that could carry a, the weight of a little more marketing and a little more um, expense. So this is Katie McCarty and she has an Instagram page and she's actually an actress who what? we hired as a model and she did a no. photo shoot. So there's a thousand pictures of her in poses with different weapons, oh different outfits. And she's got like, she's wearing a suit like a federal agent or she's wearing like, she looks like Laura Croft. And so we did like basically a whole photo shoot for all the covers for this series <laughs> so that we can have this same model on all the front covers. And it was oh so awesome just watching because they like Skyped oh. me in while they were doing this photo shoot and it was so cool because she just became this character it was just crazy watching it like she just is kenna um so it was so much fun so did, did it give you ideas for even yeah. books too, yeah yeah i mean, did like, i was yeah. like ooh, kenna's in mexico oh this makes me so excited because yeah. i mean when you find that kind of character that you can just relate to and you love and you want to you know be there for the next mystery and how is she going to solve it and how is she going to get out of this horrible situation which there's times i'm like hey she ain't getting out of this <laughs> how this is going to work out so, and that's the fun part it's like okay how's it gonna yeah. how's it gonna come but then you know as soon as this is done there's another one i mean how far out are you going to be releasing them or do you know yet the plan is to do one every two months. Okay. With some love flexibility like, oh, around. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah. <gasps> Everybody's brains just exploded. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so math it out. It's like 2025. I think I'm done. So over okay. the next two or three years, that will be the whole series. I noticed somebody asked that question. So yeah, to be her a good journey to her happily ever after. So. Oh, cool. And so, yeah. yeah, so someone said, I'm curious how many years is, so are they just basically like as the, as the months are going through, as you're writing them? Yeah. That's kind of like all of her life. <clears throat> yeah. Because I've got, uh, I've had them do photos where she's in like summer outfits and photos when she's in like winter outfits. So I'm going to try and follow the seasons, track her around the country, send her to some different places. Um, and so uh yeah so go every but every other month ish there's a longer break between so number two comes out on, right before thanksgiving and okay. then number three comes out in february because i had to um be out of the way of some other publishing house releases and then yeah. i'm kind of back on track after that so yeah and this, this is the thing y'all <laughs> i have to y'all because i'm from arkansas <laughs> she, these are not the only books she's writing either <laughs> so that is the fun part like you know, if no. there's a break when you're having to wait a couple months for like one of her other books, first of all, there's a huge backlist. Second of all, she's going to be releasing other things. So <laughs> you're going to be, you'll never, yeah. if, if you fall in love with this, which I know you will, you'll never lack finding something from Lisa to read. I guarantee. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay. So, uh, Kristen said, we're going to have to start saving so I can get all the paperbacks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we actually have audio books coming as well. So I actually sold the first five books to recorded books who are in process making um, them into audio books. So, yeah, I love That's audio. So yeah. I, 
I mostly listen to audio. Mm -hmm. um, so audio would be first. Kindle would be second, like as mm -hmm. I'm trying to go to sleep, but then don't really end up going to sleep for a while. And then paperbacks are just because mm -hmm. my phone, on the Kindle's always with me. This I have to remember to pack, but I love it all. But I, I do love when you have a series, like seeing them online. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. It's very satisfying. Yeah. Maybe that's why I do it. Yeah. That is super fun. All right. This is so cool. Okay. So again, the title is uh, Cold Dead Night. Now, do you already know some of the titles for the yes. upcoming ones? Number like two. Yeah. Number two is already up on pre-order. It's called Burn the Dawn. I'm going to totally blank number three. Number three is coming in February. I can't remember <laughs> the, what title the title is. is going to be out there soon, folks. <laughs> something, something, something. Something, something, something. I can't remember. Anyway, Burn okay. the Dawn comes out in November. <laughs> Awesome. Well, you know, and, and then once you get on to the Amazon page, if that's where you want to order from, then they're going to all be linked there anyway. So yeah. then you'll be able to see it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and I always like to encourage people, if you're thinking this is sounds amazing, it's not going to fit in my budget, go to your library and tell them like, we need to get yeah. all of Lisa's I'll request books. it. Yep. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure you do that. Okay. Let's talk about, we have some questions here from the readers. Um, they want to know, how did you get the writing bug? And have you always wanted to be a writer? Ah, okay. So I was that kid. My mom could not get me to read a book to say, she's like, uh, it was a nightmare trying to get me to read anything at all ever, which well, now because I do have children like that. <laughs> the Lord now has seen fit to put this burden also upon me and my children will <laughs> I cannot pay them to read books, although they will occasionally read one of my I have a 15 year old and she's read Cold Dead Night. So she did my series Bible for the second one. So yeah, so she she'll read my books, but really nothing else. Um and so I <sighs> I didn't know that I wanted to be a writer. I went to Bible college, not having any clue what I wanted to do with my life. And I was standing at my graduation ceremony and David Gusick, the Bible commentator, who was the college registrar at the time, he, I come up on stage at my Bible college graduation and he says, this is Lisa, she's a writer. And I literally looked at him like, what? And it had never occurred to me, never. And it was like the Lord was like, "Okay, now you're uh, you can do it." And I know you're going to screw it up. <laughs> so what? any other time, I literally like I was kind of you know um, similar story to you, but like kind of went on my own path and then came back to the Lord. And so you know, he his timing was like, "Okay, now we can talk about this writing thing," because I would have just made a complete mess of it anyway. <laughs> So, and then after that, I was like, oh, well, what do I do with this? So I kind of got into like, I'm a writer now, so what do I do? What do writers do? I don't know. Um, I, maybe I should read a book. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so awesome. <laughs> so um, I took classes, Christian Writers Guild, got, you know, kind of investigated how to do this. Um, and that was, you know, between 2005 was when I graduated and then 2012 I think I got my book first book contract so wow yeah. so did you just start you went to like online writing stuff and yeah. did you go to writer yeah. conferences yes and yeah. Do that yeah. Whole thing. yeah mm -hmm. yes but can you believe I have never been to ACFW but we're, we're gonna be there next, next week, week is my first time I'll be at that first timers meeting and we're gonna like I know what I'm doing meet? Face yeah. to face. Yes, yeah. we are. Yeah. We get to hang out and all the things. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So here's another question. I love it. Have you always done uh, suspense? Yes. Except. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, it is really like, like what I love to do probably more than anything else. Um, I have a pen name with a few uh supernatural th thrillers um, okay, i didn't know this I'm yeah like, so there's another... four of them and it was just like kind of an experiment and they didn't really go very far as, in terms of sales and so you know as far as the use of my time it wasn't but i was glad like i wanted to write them and i'm glad i did and i finished the series and so um you it is possible to locate those if you look on my website um, Are you what your pen name is? The pen name is JL Terra, and there's like four books under that name, I think, and they're all okay. supernatural thrillers. And then um, I wrote one 
short story that was a romance with no suspense and it was the weirdest thing in the <laughs> world <laughs> I was like, like I mean, nothing has really exploded, sense. right? <laughs> like what? Um, and so I was in a like a novella collection um, with a few other authors, and it was a lot of fun. But it was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of weird. That is so funny. Like I just have an urge for something really, right. really bad to right. happen at this mm -hmm. moment. <laughs> okay, so this is a good cue because you're holding up your mug. Do you want to show us which, what's on your mug? Yes. Okay. So tell us about your sunrise books. So I know that's coming up too. Yes, it is. So back, woo, good goodness, goodness. Uh 2020. Yes, 2020 and 2021. I wrote a 10 big book series in Last Chance County, <clears throat> which is the name of the town. Don't ask me why I named the town Last Chance County, but that's the town. <laughs> I don't ask me where it is, because I don't know. We debate this. We spend hours debating which part of the Wyoming Utah border this is. Anyway, um, so the town is they're all romantic suspense stories, and each of the 10 books is a different couple. And they all live in the town, and it's like the police chief and cops and spies and uh local private investigator. And I just just immersed myself in this group of people. Um, the guy who's the main character of book eight, he has he is in every book up until that point. Um, so it was just awesome. Like, I feel like I got to know these people and they're real. It's like they're real. Like, yeah, they're oh, real. Out there. Like, like, I talk to I, these are, this is who I hang out with. Um, I have so many friends. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we just make up our friends. Like, right? We don't even leave they the like house. Me. We just make up all our friends. <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, Sunrise Publishing is bringing the series back. We so in my original series, the police chief was a bad guy, and so the fire no the firefighter was fire chief was a bad guy. Sorry, the fire chief was a bad guy, and so the firefighters kind of got a bad reputation, and so we are doing a Last Chance County fire and rescue series with Sunrise Publishing that comes out next year. The first one comes out at the end of January, I'm pretty sure, um, which is why. Uh, burn the dawn is february anyway um so i have four draft authors and then i'm writing the first one so there's a five book series and it's last chance county fire and rescue and they're so good that is so awesome and it's so fun in the process so mm -hmm. i guess tell me about the process if those aren't familiar like you're like sunrise what are you talking about because mm -hmm. i do it too but Maybe someone hasn't heard about it before, right. so just tell us about the process. Yeah, so they take an established author with a story world with a series that did well, and they pair the author with um, draft authors who are, you know, newer or they've made, some of them have only written one book, some of them have written a few books and then maybe published a little bit. And um, it's kind of like a mentoring program. So we go mm -hmm. on a brainstorming week with Susan May Warren and they we brainstorm their books, give them a full outline, and then um, th they write their books. And then I basically give them feedback and mentor them through the process. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. You just get to know each other really well. Yeah. Yeah. It's so fun to see like them blossom mm -hmm. and see the, I don't know. It's like, so my, to have the books done and mm -hmm. it's like they're gonna be out there next year it's just so cool yeah. to see and we're now we're getting ready to brainstorm our second book so oh, awesome. it's yeah it's super fun mm -hmm. yes all right so you have the sunrise books you have this series mm -hmm. is there anything else going on that we can look forward um, to yes <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. because i ha don't have enough things to do um so <laughs> because uh, Cold Dead Night and this whole brand of justice series is a little bit of deviation from romantic suspense. I know I will have some readers that don't necessarily want to read a thriller. And so mm -hmm. I was like, okay, so here's the plan. I'm going to go every other. So this released this week. And then in October, book one of a Benson first responders that is just like normal, romantic suspense, fun stuff um, that everybody loves. And I'm basically going to go every other release is going to be romantic suspense or a thriller. So that's coming to I'm actually so exhausted right now. <laughs> just here. Like, curious about it. Because I'm like, wow, I know you're, I mean, you just don't live in a cabin by yourself and like write all these books. So you have a life and it's just, you inspire me. I am so inspired by you. 
Um, and you cheer me on because we're on this little group together. And yeah. I'm like, they're trying to write over here. And she's like, go, 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 go. Yeah. <laughs> Super fun. I love it. All right. So a question that I always ask because we're nearing the inter- end of the interview is, what are some of your favorite Christian books that you've enjoyed um, lately? Okay. Because... <laughs> Do you have time to read? With all- <laughs> I have time to read for like five minutes before bedtime. Here's what I've been reading. Um, okay, because we're on the sub, we just got out of the sunrise conversation. Okay, so have you read Lynette Eason's Elite Guardian series with Sunrise? The first one was yes. Kay Angelo, and the second one was Sammy Abrams. Okay, the third one comes out in October, and Sunrise lets me like sneak peek these books, and th- <laughs> and the third one, I was like. Are you kidding me? This book is so good. Okay, so it's called Defending Honor, and it's um, Lynette Eason with Kelly Underwood is the author, okay. and it was so good. And it comes out at the beginning of October, and everybody needs to buy it because I was just like, this book is so good. <laughs> that is so awesome. And they like they, I have not been disappointed reading no, these books. No, like yeah, they're dra- yeah. they're like newer authors, mm-hmm. and. Like you can't tell. No, I was, just, I, was with, I was just with Mandy, uh, and I'm like, I if I would have picked this up, I would not have thought this was your first novel ever. Mm-hmm. And you have Rachel that's helping and stuff like that. But I don't know. You're never going to feel like this is just kind of rushed or it's a new book or a new author. Mm-hmm. Or like it's they're good. Yeah, they're really good. Okay, and then mm-hmm. uh, Diana asked, "How many hours a day do you write?" <laughs> uh okay well and i do this full time so let's preface this with writing is my full-time job so right. um and it's weird now because school just started so i have one child that i homeschool but he's in sixth grade and he's kind of it's just like a check-in with everything so right. he's very self-sufficient but effectively it's you know nine to two every day generally and then i could sometimes do some more later so it's maybe like six i'm not gonna do math because you'll realize i can't do math but um you know like Writers, we, we don't do math we no, just do really yeah. don't do math. Uh, math scares me um and so yeah so it's i it's full time and especially if i'm in a first draft it's usually um seven days a week until the first draft is done because it's just too hard to be out of it for a couple of days for the weekend and then try to get back into it so you know I tend to do uh, it's probably like 15 to 20 days is a first draft and it's probably like six to eight thousand words a day ish sometimes it's two thousand because it was one of those days and sometimes it was eight thousand because it was one of those days and so you know just being showing up and being consistent and then trying to um put that around like so i do worship on sundays um usually like once a month and so trying to go try to finish and then it's a weekend for worship and then go back to something else on monday so i am a skilled project manager (laughs) at this point yeah yeah yeah. so um so yeah it's a it's a full-time job and even saying saying that like you can't write all day because your brain gets tired and so at the point where your brain doesn't really want to think anymore you have to stop and let it rest um and actually if you come in like figure out how much you can do and then come in a little bit short of that then you'll always have some reserves and you're less likely to burn out so yeah that's so good so do you when you write um and this is a writer question but i know readers will be interested too do you like go from the beginning of the book to the end of the book and just just keep going through those chapters and follow your character all the way through yeah Yes, I if I try to write out of order, my brain would explode. <laughs> and I'm a big outliner. Well, I am a big outliner, but I don't always yeah. do a big outline. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, depending but on like even I'm your doing. brain, you kind of know yeah. like the direction that you're going. Yeah. And, yeah. Or yeah. I think sometimes because I've written so many romantic suspense, some of it's just kind of inherent. Like now is when this is supposed to be happening. So obviously they're going to do this. And then, you know, it has to be fresh it can't just be the same thing recycled all the time but um so you know i ha- i do have a plan i know where i'm going because if you sit down and try to write and you don't know where you're going you just go uh and you have no idea and your brain's like too tired of thinking and then that's, what, that's what people talk about like writer's block and yeah all those yeah. Things. you don't know where you're going your brain is tired yeah 
yeah. like i don't know what to have for dinner because yeah. my brain is tired like don't ask <laughs> no. yes Okay, so it was, wow, I can't wait to read your new book. Yeah, and like, yeah. oh my goodness, keep the book coming. Amazing. So all the comments, people are like, yes, Lisa, yeah. let's do this. Let's go with the books. Let's read the books. Yeah. So yeah. for sure, go out and get this Cold Dead Night. And then how many books do you have that are already published <laughs> as they're waiting for the new ones to come out that they can go back and read and enjoy? <laughs> She's the um. I think somewhere in the neighborhood of this is number 61. Okay, that is awesome. Okay, in how many years have you done that? Since 2014. That is eight. Yeah, that is is really good. Awesome. I love it. Okay, Uh, so it says, Sorry, I came in later. Will you be able to read the books you're talking about independently, or will will we need to read in a series? Mm -hmm. So, can they pick up one just here and there, or do you think they'll need to be read in order? Yeah, because the, 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 the crime, yeah. yeah, like the crime in the book is going to be resolved within the book, but there will be things that go over the whole series. And so yeah. you may need some context on some things, but for the most part, it'll be, you know, here's a crime, it gets solved before the end of the story. So. Yeah, so if you're just interested in the crimes, every book will have a crime that gets solved. But, you know, I mean, if you just happen to come across one of those books, like, don't not read it. But you can start now with Cold Dark Night. <laughs> and then you can have all of them done. <laughs> oh, Kate, Kate, we were just talking about your book. Did you hear us talking about yes. your book, Kate? We're um, Kate says, I'm already waiting for the next book. Yeah, actually, I she read know. it like a year ago. <laughs> Because I was like, is this any good? And now now she's like, excuse me, I've been waiting a year for the next one. (laughs) Hey, you have the patience. You have all the patience there. Awesome. Okay, so where can people go to find this book and Mm -hmm. find more information about you? Mm-hmm. Um, authorlisaphillips.com and then um, the Last Chance County has its own website so lastchancecounty.com and then all the Sunrise stuff will be on there as well as that whole universe is kind of one thing and then uh, Brand of Justice which is Cold Dead Night will be all on authorlisaphillips.com awesome yes and then amazon you know they can just yeah yeah my new stuff is all kindle unlimited so the ebook is amazon and then the paperback is everywhere and the audiobook will be everywhere too so i love it and uh uh, allison says i'm looking forward to reading the next book (laughs) yeah cool well thank you so much for being here you're awesome i'm ready for the next one but i know i have some other ones i could go back and read while i'm waiting for the next one so thank you lisa so much for being here